uh, as though you were to bend a ladder into a circle and tick off some of the rungs and then stand inside this ladder and roll around like a big coin on the stage. <laughs> I remember saying to my dad, Dad, it's starting, it's starting. And what I like to say after that is that little did I know is that something actually was starting. And then when I saw this, um, this warrior up on stage move and manipulate this wheel for the five minutes that he was on stage, it did something to me. It gave me this great spark. It comes from, a, um, it comes from an Austrian man named Otto Fick. I can't pronounce his name well. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, yes, it comes from an Austrian man. and it, it, it was invented in the mid-1920s, um, and it was made because he, um, uh, his grandfather was a blacksmith, and he put two uh, cart wheels together with some sticks and rolled down a hill. So this man, Mr. Feek, built his and patented his wheel based on uh, being able to roll down a hill. There's a straight line event, a spirals event, and a vaulting event. Uh, straight line is, would be where you have the wheel up on uh, on its own two edges rolling like this and uh, with that you'll do your you'll do your elements either within the wheel always on a straight line like this up and around the top of the wheel on the different bars for example uh, as we go into a spiral event the spiral event is when you tilt onto one rim of the wheel and you roll around like this and you go around backwards like this uh, and then as you get into the vaulting event is where you push the wheel and then you run and then you jump up on top of the wheel with the momentum of the wheel and do some kind of a flip off of it. Those are the events for competition German wheel. I went and I saw a Cirque du Soleil show called Kidam. And um, in the back of the program, it had an ad that said, if this is your dream, it can be possible. Join us at the National Circus School in Montreal. And then I ended up quitting my day job so that I could spend my days training for the circus. And then one event after another led to me actually being able to uh, be in the circus. I did three years of training at school. Uh, that was full-time training. Uh, and then I went out into the world and did work. But the way, that it, oh, the, way that it, the way that it had gone is that at this moment that I started to get intense about really focusing, and this was a two-week period. This wasn't a long period of time. After I had kind of stepped away from doing German Wheel, um, I, I found a, a two-week moment of really, really deciding that this is what it was that I was going to do. A couple of months later, in a place that I was working at, uh, teaching the flying trapeze in Los Angeles, um, Cirque du Soleil was going to be coming into Los Angeles to give uh, auditions. Um, and it happens that they were going to be giving their audition at the same place that I was volunteering to teach. After I had already done my audition, she's seen me do my German wheel act. She's seen my videotape. And, um, <clears throat> and she says to me, uh, she writes me an email back that says, everything is status quo on Kidam right now, but if anything changes, rest assured that we're going to call you right away. At that point, I was still living in, in, uh, in Los Angeles, and I was taking and I was practicing my German wheel on the cement basketball courts outside. Uh, I was going every day to the basketball court to do 10 shows a week. I wasn't going to train. I wasn't going to practice German wheel. I was going, doing 10 shows a week for Kidam on this basketball court. Understand, I was putting myself already in the mindset of doing 10 shows a week. I was really showing that this is what I wanted to do. Because the thing is, is that if that ship came in, this was my dream. If that ship came in, I didn't want to. I didn't want to miss the boat, right? I didn't want. I didn't want to not be ready. And when I achieved, when they when they finally called me to to come and do the show, I sat in the car and I cried in front of my dad for 20 minutes. I was like, I'm going to go. I'm going to do the show. And this is 10 years later, right? <laughs> this whole 10-year journey of uh, of traveling and doing the show. There's a lot of ups and ups and downs that come with it. There's a great great excitement of going to a new city, and then there's uh, a difficult part of, um, of not having roots and then finding, finding uh, this path, uh, finding your roots on this path of something that's so up and down. There's also been a lot of, um, a lot of experiences that I've had. Uh, you, would think, you would think that it, I've, I've had an injury during the show, which put me out for a year and I had to have surgeries on my shoulders. Um, and I've, uh, there's been other kinds of injuries that I've had. And you'd think that that would be, and like for example, when I had uh, my shoulder injuries, um, I actually had to stop the show. And I had to say to the audience, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna kind of continue. I'm gonna walk off calmly um, so that you know that nothing is wrong with me because they all saw me fall. And I've fallen a lot. 
<laughs> I've fallen a lot in front of thousands of people and there's a genuine humility that comes with this fall. But none of those falls and none of those injuries I would call my worst experiences. They've all been something, something that's given something. You know, there's a lot that I can, I can pull from that would be my best experience. One that was really heightened with emotions would be um, the very last show. And the very last show, it was just everybody was on their top game. Nobody was fearful, nobody was um, anxious. Everybody was just really there to give, 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 give everything that they got. And, and then it came to an end and we all hugged each other and we all cried and it was this incredible, beautiful, Thing. I mean, we had all just now spent all of this time traveling from all these cities and all around the world together to it being done. And we knew it was going to be done. It wasn't a sudden thing. But that, that emotion was, was, regardless of how much we knew that it was coming, that emotion was very, very real. It was very uh, incredible, very, a very heightened sense of things. That's a, that's a good highlight. There's a lot of other best moments, but that's, um, that's one that I can really draw from that gave a lot of real and raw emotions.